What's up, Hairbrain? This is Cassie. I am the National Artistic Director with Alpha Parf Mulatto, the best Italian hair color in the world. And I'm here live from New York City at this beautiful salon with Hairbrain. Um, I wish you guys could tour the space because it's pretty legit. Uh, but today I'm super excited. I have my model Evelyn here. Evelyn is showcasing our signature Italian balayage technique, but we're actually doing it on naturally curly hair, obviously. So this is just a really great way to show the versatility of the technique. I'm gonna talk through everything that I'm doing, um, the products I'm using, kind of why I'm approaching it this way, but just keep in mind, because this is a live, feel free to ask me questions. Courtney's behind the camera, so she's gonna read them off to me, so that way you know we can be super conversational and just make sure that you guys get all the information you need from this. Um, so with that being said, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, kind of how I started. You guys can see we pre-did this front area. And one thing that I really like to focus on with the Italian balayage is customization. With curl, this is especially important because we know that curl is very specific to that person. Not everyone's curl pattern is going to be the same, obviously, and even sometimes throughout their head, maybe it's different towards the front than it is in the back. So what I really wanted to do is be super intuitive with my front face frame here. Um, for the Italian balayage, we typically do an Italian face frame, but to really make sure that her color was gonna fall according to exactly how her curl falls naturally, I really went through and just freehanded all of this. So focusing on picking up, you guys can see I've isolated these curl groupings, and that's where I painted my freestyle lightener, which this is our Apple Parf Milano BB Bleach Freestyle. It's a clay base. So you can see it's already been processing and it has created its shell and look at how nicely she's lifted. Really great. So huge focus on kind of intuitively placing my lightener so that I see highs where I wanna see highs and I see lows where I wanna see lows. Um, there's some areas where I've fully saturated the ends. She did have some previous color here. So like, let's see, maybe one in the back, a fresh piece in the back. I don't know how well you guys can see, but she had like a red quite a while back. Um, how long ago did you say that was? Last June. Last June. Okay, so it's definitely been a while, but the color is still there. We know it doesn't just disappear. So throughout all of her ends, I'm going to lightly kiss them with some of the lightener. Um, you can already kind of see like some of it's like dazzled, saturated, but where I want to see a lot of brightness, the most important thing when using a clay is to make sure you're working that product and that you're using enough and layering it on. So pre-did the front, that's processing. I'm gonna show you guys my roadmap for the back. This is one of my favorite parts of the Italian balayage because the back placement gives you the freedom to freehand as much as you want. And I have to ask, what yeah. exactly is the Italian balayage? Yeah, great question. I guess we should just start with that. Um, so this is our Alpha Parf Milano signature technique. It's one of our advanced techniques that we teach across the country. Um, it's basically our way of doing a balayage. So creating that beautiful lived in color that's continuing to be super on trend. Um, but what's great about it is it focuses on excellence. So making sure that we're being very technical and purposeful with everything that we do. You know, we're focusing on customization so that the technique doesn't have to fit the client, the client, wait, the reverse. The client doesn't have to fit the technique, the technique fits them, right? Um, super important. and. When I think of Italian, I think customized, I think um, the best of the best tailor fit and really focusing on utilizing the technology we have in our color line, which is based out of Italy. So um, with that being said, this placement I use like this, I'm going to show you guys the back bricklay placement here. Um, I use it on straight hair as well as curly hair. It's kind of like my blueprint or my roadmap. The biggest difference with natural curl, anytime I'm balayaging or freeform painting, so not using foils, is I like to kind of pick up and isolate the curl grouping. So can you guys see how this curl is kind of just, all of those strands are falling together into this one grouping. In order to create impact and contrast, you wanna paint with that grouping versus combing through it and then taking out a section. Sometimes I feel like if you don't paint to that grouping, you kind of lose, um, some of the impact and the contrast that you could see had you just, you know, worked with the way the hair naturally falls. And you mentioned this is a technique that you all teach um, everywhere. How can someone sign up for a class with you for education? That's such a good question. So we host classes all across the country. We have an incredible master colorist team that actually just got certified in this technique 
beginning of the year, which is, I guess it's only February, so we're not that far in, but um, they're ready to teach this. So get in touch with your local Alpha Parf Milano distributor and they can get you linked up with a class. It's also always great to keep in touch with us on social. So follow Alpha Parf USA. We're always posting education there. Okay, so I'm going through and I'm painting my freestyle lightener on. And one thing I think is a really great thing to keep in mind when you're using a clay is how much you're saturating. So a lot of times I, I have, at least in the past, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, I've been kind of a little reluctant to use clays, especially on someone this dark, because it's kind of hard to get the lift that you want. But one thing I learned is I just wasn't like working it properly. So if you really layer on that product, meaning I don't want to see her hair through that subsection. I want to see the lightener, the white. It's opaque. Um, that's how you're going to get the maximum lift. Even if you're just surface saturating, the surface of that subsection will get the full lift. And then one thing I want to point out, I have two bowls of lightener over here. And this is especially important for natural curl. I want to talk about the potency of my lightener. I know for Hair the Stark, it's kind of easy for us to go straight to like the high volume developers and I get it. I know time is money and you know, looking at someone like this, they're pretty dark and it can be intimidating to use something lower than a 30. Um, but one thing I like to focus on is texture. Not all curly hair is coarse, right? Her hair is actually, Evelyn's hair is kind of more of like a fine to normal texture. So if I were to use too potent of a formula, I would totally destroy her curl. So instead, at her base where she's darker, that's where I'm using my 30. But then throughout her ends, I'm actually just using 10. And we have a lot of people just joining us and a few people are asking, what clay lightener are you using? Sure, this is Alpha Parf Milano's, our Alpha Parf Milano's BB Bleach Freestyle Lightener. It's a mouthful, but it's Alpha Parf Milano's. Um, and when you look at the can, I actually have it right there. I can show you guys in a second, or Courtney's got it. Zoom in right in. Um, what you want to look for is freestyle lift. So that just tells you this is like the free form lightener. And would you ever do this technique on wet hair or you typically always like to do it on dry hair? I always like to do it on dry hair, especially with natural curl. Again, I think one of the focuses here is maintaining the integrity of that curl, right? As soon as we start damaging the hair, the curl is going to be disrupted and you know, I think it's important to build trust with that client and make sure that they know, like, I'm not going to push your hair past its limit just to get more done in one session. I would rather bring you in again, use lower volume developers, and maintain a beautiful curl pattern, a beautiful uniform curl pattern. And you mentioned it earlier, and I think it's important for everyone to know that's just joining, that you mentioned um, you would paint the same way regardless of the texture of the hair, whether it was straight hair or curly hair, this technique is still done the same. Yeah, you can, well, so the cool thing is you can use the sectioning the same way, whether the hair is curly or straight. Um, Freehanding like this, you can totally do with straight hair too. I think personally, sometimes it's a little bit easier to do it this way with curl because you can visually see how each curl is laying, right? And that's super specific. Like if I were to brush through this subsection and just kind of go about it like I would straight hair, the impact wouldn't be the same because the style and the end result is totally different. So I'm kind of like, I always encourage my clients if they're coming in for a color service and they have beautiful curl like this, I want them to come in with their hair, like natural, the way that they typically wear it. So I can see exactly how their curl pattern is falling. You have a big fan. Mike says, Oh my God, she's one of my favorite educators. I always learn so much from her. Hopefully what? one day Mike? I'll get to do a live class with her. Happy I love Monday. That, Mike. Wow. You just made my whole day. I love it. Okay. So now what I want you guys to see on these ends, I'm not going to fully saturate them at all. If anything, I just want to create like a little bit of glimmer, um, throughout her ends. I want to keep most of that depth. So I'm just kind of kissing some of this. It's really not going to do much. And how long will you let this sit on her hair? So our lighteners can process for up to 55 minutes. Um, and again, with curl, because I'm using lower developers, I like to let it go. Um, what I always encourage stylists, and this is just kind of the off of Parf Milano way, is excellence over speed. And I know that that's kind of like a tough thing to hear because we know time is money and 
that's super important and that's also why with this technique we teach how to make your work super impactful like what zones do I focus on so that I'm not wasting my time worrying about one area um, but regardless I think it's really important to kind of use that lower volume and keep the integrity and make sure that we're not losing this curl that's like the most important thing and if you were in the salon how would you typically book out this type of service so I think consultations initially are super important, especially if it's a new client, if you haven't seen their hair in person before. Um, main reason, I think a lot of times, and even when I saw Evelyn before um, we decided to do this together, looking at her, I would assume her texture might be kind of coarse, right? Um, but we know that texture is defined as the diameter of each individual hair strand. So just because her hair is curly and she has a lot of it, doesn't mean her strands are wide. She actually has like finer, more normal strands. Because of that, I have to adjust my formula, otherwise I'll blow out her curl and all of this beautiful wave will be elongated. So I think it's important to kind of assess that texture in consultation first, so you can kind of come up with a game plan. Um, then session one for me is actually most of the time focusing on this front, because that's what the client's gonna see, and then it gives me a chance to really get to know their hair, kind of see how it lifts, um, how it adapts to the products, everything. And then maybe session, after session one, we'd be able to determine based on the end result she's looking for, how many sessions it's gonna take for us to get there. And again, I, I always like to use, someone gave me the advice of under promise over deliver. I think that's always great advice. And explain to your clients, you know, educate them too and say, you know, as a colorist, I could totally probably get you really light in one session, but I'm gonna destroy your hair. And that's not the kind of colorist I am. I'd rather preserve it. So, yeah, that's the way we go about it. Absolutely. And I don't know if we've said it earlier, but for those just joining, where can everybody find you online? Oh, so my Instagram handle is Cass Siskovic. I should probably spell it for you. <laughs> um, it's C-A-S-S-I-S-K-O-V-I-C. And um, I am with Alpha Parf Milano. I'm their National Artistic Director. So even if you follow Alpha Parf Milano USA, um, that's a great way to get connected too. So you guys can see as I'm kind of going through saturating this product again, up here where she's darker and in the back, it's a little bit different than the front. I would say I'm going to about this line here, just really where I see that color change and where her curl gets a little bit more fragile. I'm using my 30 volume. And then on her ends, I'm just using 10. But again, one really important tip when you're working with a clay, layer it on. If you don't, you're not gonna get the lift that is promised by the manufacturer. And I know for me, like that was a mistake I was originally making with clays. And as soon as I started layering the product on, totally changed the end result. So you wanna saturate all the way through top and bottom. So on the bottom, I am pushing my product all the way through. Up here, I'm still staying on the surface, but that's actually a really good call out because I think sometimes when we think surface saturation, we think less product. But this is still just as opaque as it is down here. And that's how I know I'm gonna get that nice, clean, consistent lift versus you know funky, warm transition lines. And going back to the consultation, Lauren's asking, how do you kind of manage the client's expectations? She says, I feel like clients can be impatient and want immediate results, or they will complain due to dark hair pulling warm. Okay, Lauren, I'm going to be like super real with you right now. It's, it's tough because sometimes you have that client that's like, no, I want this today. And that's it. And that's where you have to make the judgment call. And I will tell you the first person I said no to, it was horrifying, but that same person that I said no to actually ended up coming back to me to fix their hair. So even if you have the confidence to initially say no because it goes against your artistry and your standards and the level of excellence that you want the hair you do to exhibit, that's the way it's gotta be. And if they're not the right client for you, they're not the right client for you, you know? I'd rather have a bunch of clients with beautiful, healthy hair than a bunch of clients that I've gotten in and out maybe with what they expected and their hair is probably not in the best state. And it's hard because you're in California, so I'm assuming you're getting a lot of requests for the balayage and the blondes. Everyone, I swear, everyone gets the same hair on the West Coast <laughs> and 
it's kind of cool because the trend is super beautiful. It's great. Um, but yeah, I mean, that means like managing expectations, like really just having that conversation. I mean, clients aren't stupid. They're smart. They can research just about everything that you're telling them anyway. So the more confidence you have and the more respect you have for your artistry and what you're trying to execute, the better off that whole experience will be for them and for you, I think. Okay, so again, this is where balayage gets actually kind of difficult to instruct because being intuitive is just that. It's intuitive. It's not anything specific. It's very visual. So I'm just kind of looking at her hair and you'll notice like as I'm subsectioning, I should show you, I'm taking diagonals. So my first subsection came diagonal down here. Then I went just off center and came up. And now I'm going to come off center here. Notice I'm not using a comb. I'm just using my fingers. Um, super important tip for curl because, again, if you use a comb when you're freestyling like this, you're going to break up all those curl families, and then you're not going to see where definition might fit best on that canvas. So if you're trying to be intuitive, don't comb through it. Just use your hands. And then from here... I'm kind of taking a look and again based on maybe my last subsection placement based on how it's falling and I also like to consider you know when she flips her hair forward like this piece over here coming forward will create a lot of impact just on that side so this is a really great curl to kind of isolate and freehand paint so to confirm, because we had a couple of people joining in as you were explaining that your yeah. sections are diagonal. Yes, they are opposite diagonals and they're kind of brickling within one another. Um, it actually really helps to keep everything clean. I know with curly hair, sometimes it's easy to get kind of lost, or at least for me, it sometimes is. So having a blueprint and just like a back sectioning like this is super clutch for not only being clean, but also being quicker. Like and that would be. Did you use the point. same sectioning pattern in the front? So in the front, I actually just took diagonal forwards, um, but still kind of the same concept. As I was taking those diagonal forward subsections, I was looking at each one and then intuitively painting each piece based on how it was falling. And again, I'm using our freestyle, off Park Milano's freestyle clay base lightener. And my developers are selected very specifically to her canvas. So I'm using 30 volume up here at the top where she's super dark, but then where her hair is previously colored, I'm using only 10 volume. And I'm super excited. I can even show you guys some of the hair in the front. It lifted beautifully. And that's even just with 10 volume. I should check and see what time we got here. Well, what time we started? About three? Okay, so it's about ready. But that's the great thing is you can see it fully processed. It's also dried, so it's done. Sorry, I'm gonna use your shoulders to turn you. <laughs> Let's see, so like this is a good example. So look at the difference between these two. And you guys, that's with 10 volume. So if you can preserve the integrity of the hair and just let it process, 1000% do that. And after this technique, once you get your client lifted, what is the um, upkeep for it? How often would they come back and see you? What does that look like? So for Evelyn, we were actually just talking about this. Everything's like softly off the scalp. So even though I'm um, focusing on loading my product on, I'm still feathering. Like I'm still keeping it nice and soft. Um, so the grow out will be super low maintenance. The other thing that I want to focus on is trying to lift clean. Um, just to ensure that her fade out is pretty and it's not too brassy. Evelyn actually wears warm tones really well though. So that's kind of the cool thing when we formulate her toner. And I think I actually know what I'm going to use so I can speak to that in a second. But, um, I think the fade out, like just dependent on how it wears for her can also determine her maintenance, but I would always encourage my clients in between color services to come back in the salon for a semi Delino treatment. Um, something specifically customized to them just so that way we're continuing to preserve their hair. I mean, everyone should do that, whether you're color treated or not. Our hair goes through so much more than I think we realize. And what exactly is the Semi Delino treatment? Amazing. So <laughs> Semi Delino is Alpha Park Milano's care line. Semi Delino is Italian for flaxseed. 
So if you're familiar with skincare, that's a super popular ingredient in skincare and cosmetics, but it really just creates like that beautiful lustrous shine, that improved elasticity in the hair, um, so many endless benefits. But our whole care line for, is formulated with a focus in flaxseed. Um, we typically walk our clients through like a couple different tests when we're determining what system is best for them. Um, the most popular is the combability test. So this is where you would literally just take a strand of their hair, um, shampoo it with our illuminating system, which is for like normal healthy hair, no conditioner, and then you just comb through it. If you can comb through the hair less than three in less than three rounds, um, you know that their hair is healthy and it's in a good state. So they are great for the illuminating system. Um, however, if it takes a little bit more than that, then you probably have to do an elasticity test to figure out whether they need moisture or they need repair. Um, elasticity is interesting. So when the hair is wet, it's typically just when you're stretching it like this. Um, kind of hard to tell when it's dry, but if the hair is damaged when it stretches, you'll feel it kind of like snapping. So a blonde, for example, <laughs> likely has some areas where they will need repair. Um, like for example, for me, I have not been this blonde in a long time. So in the approach to doing it, my hair actually did pretty well but I am alternating between reparative and moisture just to ensure that my hair is getting the benefits it needs. And does the line have something that is a take-home service for your clients as well? Yeah, totally. Everything is retail. Um, well, almost everything you have the opportunity to retail, but one thing I love about it too is we have specific vials and services that you can utilize that are professional only as well. So it's kind of the cool thing for a stylist is that's another service and an opportunity for us to just further professionalize the products and keep our clients coming back. But yeah, everything's retailable that your clients can take home and, and use. Let's see, Benjamin's asking if your client wants really clean and blonde hair mm -hmm. and you need two sessions to keep the integrity, do you have to pick out the same sections again in round two? Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, so actually with Evelyn, we're going to see, I mean, she slipped it really nicely. So I'm going to see her again in a few weeks. Um, and we were going to try to create like a really pretty champagne blushy color on her. That was kind of like our goal and results, but I wasn't sure how she was going to lift today. So again, under promise over deliver, I told her we might get there next time, but looking at her, I'm like super impressed with her hair and I'm thinking we could probably get pretty close today. Um, so that's always cool, but I think visually you're able to kind of see where each uh, section and piece is placed because of this sectioning blueprint. So that's the other great thing about the Italian balayage is if you do it this way, it's so easy for retouch. You're able to visually pick back up everything that you did last time and paint it. And then like, let's say for example, overall I wanted these ends to be a little bit brighter. Second session that gives me more opportunity to focus on that versus detailing all of this out. Um, or just detailing it out slightly to get her that really clean blonde? That's a good question. I talk a lot with my hands, guys. Sorry, I keep stopping. No, this is great. <laughs> a lot of love coming in. Amazing. I love you guys back. Okay. So, again, just painting my first formula, which is my more potent lightener towards the top. And then another good indication that I need to use a lighter developer is, I mean, look at how fine the strand gets towards the bottom. And a lot of times, you know, like damage can happen just from like the environment. It doesn't always have to be from color treated. So I think as a colorist, if you're looking to avoid breakage, it's always good to just really assess the hair and figure out where you can adjust your formulas and use something a little less potent. Um, another pro tip I like sharing about lighteners is in our arsenal, like right now I'm using our freestyle only because it's clay and I'm processing open air, but let's say I was foiling. We have two different options. We have our Easy Lift 7, which is our less potent lightener, and then we have our High Lift 9, which is our most potent lightener. So on a client that is looking for a lot of lift, I would probably be more likely to use our more potent lightener with 20 volume than our less potent with 30. And again, that's just from knowing and understanding what tools you have available to you to create the end result you're looking for without damaging your client's hair. 
and also kind of just thinking through it, right? Like putting purpose and why behind everything that we do. Let's see. We have another question from Benjamin, but a different Benjamin. Cool. Um, this is kind of specifically with curly hair. Um, they worry that bleaching to the end, they are going to have warmth towards the roots and not matching the end. Hmm. So that's also why it was super important for me to adjust my developers. So remember, I'm using 30 volume towards the top here. So that's basically a two level jump between 30 and 10. Um, so that's gonna help compensate for it. And then also that's where, as I'm glossing and toning my client to create transition for balayage and especially on curly hair, I actually love having dimensional depth with your blonde specifically. So not just depth from their natural, but also within the highlight I'm creating. Um, Cause I think sometimes on curly hair specifically, if it's too bright from top to bottom, it can look really stripy, really easy. So having some of that progression, which is also why I like painting this way sometimes, it creates a little bit more blonde dimension and will actually look better when the curl is formed and styled. So, you know, I think there's a lot of different approaches that you can take to coloring curly hair and this is just one of them. Um, but I do like maintaining that dimension. I think it's important. Okay, so we're getting towards the back here. And at the top, what's super important, again, like sometimes clients will have, sorry, I keep turning you and not telling you. <laughs> um, sometimes clients will have growth patterns here. Um, you know, maybe they have like a little bit of unique spacing. So whether they're curly or straight, when I get towards the top here, I really like just kind of working the hair to see how it falls. Also, like, let's say the wind blows, you know, is she going to have like a big hole exposed? Like, how does it move naturally? How does it live naturally? And how can I enhance that as best as possible? Um, a lot of times with straight hair, I will go by their little whirl just because I know that usually you see this sometimes and it's better, I think, to color to it than make it do something it's not going to naturally do. And I'll literally pop foils on either side here. Um, so again, coloring to the way the hair naturally falls versus against it. And with curly hair, I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. So visually, and again, do you guys see how this curl grouping, these, these strands are sticking together, so we're not gonna break them up. We're gonna keep them together and start here. Let's see, Jeff is asking, um, he is a stylist and he has been doing his wife's hair mm. and she's about 25% gray and it is coarse. Ooh. I color it with a deep red brown. Her hair is so dry that I do deep conditioners as well. Good. Um, but her hair is still fragile and dry. Okay. Any suggestions on what to do to rebuild the hair and restore the shine and yeah, integrity? Yeah, you know, gray hair is a little bit unique too because I'm betting... Um, I'm betting when you're feeling her hair, it's feeling like even a little bit wiry maybe in some areas. And a lot of times that's just like the cuticle being naturally super compact. I've seen that a lot in um, gray hair that's a little bit coarser like that. But I definitely think sticking to moisture-based systems versus protein is going to be your best bet. Um, sometimes with that specific hair type, I notice that protein can kind of sometimes make it feel a little harder. Um, versus give it that flexibility and elasticity that maybe that compact cuticle is preventing it from having. Um, and additionally, just make sure that whatever color you're using is not going to encourage further damage. So like super low ammonia, which Alpha Park Milano is super low ammonia, and I'm going to talk about our permanent color in a second. Um, but using something that's going to preserve the integrity of the hair, but also create like that softness and that that shine that we expect color to create initially. Um, we are actually too, this is kind of a good segue, we are gonna tone Evelyn with permanent color. And that's a little bit unique. Um, I think in most cases, you know, we think about toning with Demi, obviously, but I love having permanent shades to tone with in my arsenal for a couple different reasons. So one thing I've learned about Alpha Park Milano's Evolution of the Color, which is our permanent line, um, is that we have micro crystallized pigments. So the best way I can explain this is thinking of M&Ms. I wish I had M&Ms with me. Me too. Um, but, yeah, that would be nice. Um, 
picturing like the three different categories of M&Ms, we have like peanut M&Ms, then we have normal M&Ms, and then we have the minis, right? And if you put each of them in the same size jars, which jar is going to have the most M&Ms? The one with the minis, right? So the strands of the hair are kind of the same way with the pigment size that we use. So if I'm using a color that has super large pigments, one, there's not as many in that individual strand of hair, and two, Think about that reaction. Like think about how much more ammonia we have to use to open the cuticle so that color can get in because it has to be opened more. So it might create an even more potent color. Um, Alpha Parf Milano is, it's a really affordable line, but it's definitely, I would still definitely consider it a luxury line. And that is one of the main reasons why it is because of our micro crystallized pigments. It, it definitely costs more to manufacture that way, but the end results are way better. And it's great for that specific type of hair that you know is coarse, you know needs a little bit more of that conditioning, but needs the pigment load. It's like the perfect balance. Cool. I'm gonna do another one over here. And for those just joining it, this part has kind of all been by eye and just watching where the curl lays. Yeah, so this is my, my last top subsection in the back. Everything up to this point has been diagonals, so I'll kind of visually like break it down for you. So our first was here, and then my next diagonal was like just off center from that one coming up, and then I did one here, and now I'm here. So this is my last subsection that I'm creating in the back. Um, the great thing about that placement is I think of it as a blueprint. It keeps everything clean. It makes sure that I'm hitting all the impact zones in the hair, which at Alpha Parf Milano, we think of impact zones as the areas where you want to spend your time coloring the hair that will get you the most impact with the less, least amount of work. Um, and within those subsections, I'm very visually and very intuitively painting the hair and I'm really focused on painting with each individual curl grouping. Because again, this is how her hair is gonna style. Every time a client comes in for a color service, especially that has curly hair, I like them to come in with the way they typically style it, the way that they typically wear it. Um, you know, for me, consultation kind of starts like from first sight. <laughs> Like I creep on them almost immediately just to see kind of what their general vibe is. You know, we all have those clients who say that they're up for high maintenance color, but maybe, you know, just getting to know them and talking to them or even, I don't know, like seeing them, we might be able to make some judgment calls or talk to them about things that we might be a little bit not as confident. <laughs> um, but with curly hair especially, you want to see the hair exactly how it's falling so you can color according to that to get the most impact. Now, another great call out is Evelyn does like to wear her hair straight sometimes. So a really great way to make sure that it's gonna be nice and soft and blended straight is again, just making sure that all of my lines are nice and blended. I'm still packing that product on, but nothing is gonna be harsh. And I think that's also a great way to determine, you know, when do I use foils and when, when do I do like a freehand balayage like this? I think freehand balayage is very much to the way the hair naturally falls. So you're able to wear it both ways. Whereas with foils, there may be a little bit more specific. We're using higher tension. We're pulling the hair a lot. Um, so that might be more specific to straight or, you know, doing something all over. Cool, so like you guys can kind of see if you take a step back, if we're talking about intuitively placing color, um, this is a really great place for me to focus another accent and kind of bring it up higher. So what I wanna do is just find a little curl grouping. Now this one is a good example of a you know, curl that's been broken up a little bit more. So super intuitive, which I also think is kind of fun. Anytime we get a chance to freehand balayage hair, I think it's super exciting and it's just a great opportunity to be a little bit more creative, a little bit more artistic. 
And with your clients, how do you know when it's a good opportunity to freehand as opposed to foils? So first and foremost, we know freehanding is not going to create as much lift as foils will. So if your client requires a lot of lift, like if they don't want to wear warmth like Evelyn does, if they don't um, want to see any of that underlying pigment, foiling is going to be the way to go. Um, and then additionally, I think placement, you know, so with curl, if I have the opportunity to do freehand like this, I really like to, because I know exactly the way that color is going to look in the end result, because that's exactly how I'm placing it. Like there's less guesswork. Um, so for me, those are the two key indicators of when I'm freestyling within the Italian balayage and when I'm incorporating foils. Cool. And then I'm thinking maybe I might do one more on this side. I'm really excited for you guys to see the after. Um, I'll definitely post it to my page and we have Evelyn's full before on my Instagram too. And we'll probably put it in the comments. Right? Yes, absolutely. So you guys will have access to like her full before and then her after once we get her all styled out so that you can really see what this end result creates. And for those just joining again, where can they find you on Instagram? My Instagram is Kassiskovic. I'm going to spell it for you guys. It's C-A-S-S-I-S-K-O-V-I-C. It's like half of my first name and my last name. Maybe not the best searchability, but it's me. Um, and then two, I am the National Artistic Director for Alpha Parf Milano in the U.S. So if you follow Alpha Parf Milano U.S., that's also a great way to connect and also to learn about all the education opportunities that we have going on. And if someone wanted to bring you into their salon to educate, is it best to go through Alpha Parf? Definitely, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Cool. All right, so now I'm just gonna dust over some of these ends, again, with my lower volume developer, but just to kind of break it up, give it a little bit of shatter. And would do you do this technique on straight hair as well? Um, straight hair? Yeah, you can. I think what, what I get careful about with straight hair is also if it's previously lifted, um, like not over-processing it. So sometimes on a blonde, for example, if she needs her ends just like slightly brightened up, nothing too crazy, they just need like a little bit a little bit of a detail. This is a great technique to use. But if you're looking for a significant lift, you want to be a little bit more disciplined about it. And you can see in the front, um, throughout her ends, I was a little bit more disciplined about it in quite a few areas. So I'm not trying again, Evelyn. So like for example, these ends were fully saturated, right? because I really wanted to see that lift. And towards the front, she wants to be a little bit brighter. So to create that, I wanted to make sure I was giving her that brightness. This is the beauty of a clay lightener, you guys. So do you see how dry it is? That's when you know it's created, like that's the clay casting, keeps everything clean, but you also know that that lightener is done. I'm like still so blown away by this lift. Can you guys see how much lift we got there? And does it stop processing after a certain time with so, the clay lightener? 55 minutes, I would say, is like the max you want to leave it on for. Um, with the clay, though, this is, this is the one that I think is a little bit more flexible in terms of timing. Because it creates that outer shell, you have a little bit more of an ease of processing. But one thing I always like to call out too is, you know, if I'm done with the back, I do like to go through my front and just recheck my work, make sure everything was saturated properly, um, make sure everything has lifted evenly. And then once we feel comfortable with that, we're good to go. I'm gonna talk through what I'm toning her with for you guys too, because that's a super important part of the service. Um, and again, I mentioned, I'm gonna be toning her with permanent color. So, I'm gonna show you guys the boxes actually. Are you comfortable? Are you good? Yes, I'm okay. good. I might take off my crazy gloves too. You guys know the life. I before we went live, I had lightener all over. I already do. Lightener all over my pants. <laughs> the life More of a hairstylist. Like, you know the normal stylist does. It's all 
all good. Everything we wear, we know is at risk of something. So. Yes. Okay. A couple things I want to point out. So this is our evolution of the color. These are our permanent color shades. So again, remember super low ammonia content, which is really great. Um, but also the benefit to toning lifted hair with permanent color is if it's virgin, you get that extra little kick of lift. Um, additionally, because I'm using the permanent line and because Aquapark Milano is so gentle, it's a great option for curls because you get that little bit of extra buffer, but it's still super gentle. Um, with both formulas, I'm just going to use 10 volume. I don't need to use anything more than that. Um, and our volume developer is our Oxido. Okay. So this is what we'll mix with. Um, our mixing ratio is actually one to one and a half, which is also like a little bit unique. I know it's not as easy or straightforward as mixing one to one or one to two, but the really important piece to that is think about again what I talked about with the pigments. They're super small, so they require a very specific amount of oxidation to fully appear on the hair. So you want to make sure that you're measuring, you're mixing according to that ratio if you want to see those benefits. Um, on Evelyn's base, I think we're going to use our 6NI, which is our natural intense. Um, Tone-wise, our NIs are kind of in the middle of the warm scale, so they're not quite warm, they're not quite cool, they kind of live in the middle. Um, which makes them great for basing. Like I love them for basing. They also have a lot of pigment. So I know we talked before about creating transition in blonde and depth in blonde. This is going to help kind of encourage that, especially where we're transitioning from, gosh, her dark level three hair to her blonde. Um, it'll create that beautifully for us. So we're going to kind of use that throughout the top area of her head here. Um, then I have a 721, which is just a really pretty violet based ash with slight blue reflection so great for neutralizing her warmth i do want to see once i rinse her kind of what that yellow looks like before i say i'm gonna use this for sure um and then for her ends because of how well she's lifted um i think we might use our 921 with our rose copper pigment which i'm so excited about this is what's going to create that like super pretty blushy tone so our pigments are really, really cool. If you guys aren't familiar with our pigments, talking maintenance, um, our pigments, this is obviously like a pink blushy base with a copper reflection, but these adapt to whatever pH you put them in. So if I put them in permanent color, they will adapt to the longevity of permanent color. If I put it in a conditioner so that Evelyn has something to maintain her color, it will do that for her and adapt to that pH. Um, these are unlike any direct dye pigment you will ever use. They're super cool, super innovative, and just great for really customizing the maintenance, but also your formulas. Like you can create anything from it. Cool. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about with Evelyn, how are we on time? How are we on questions? We're good. Is everyone okay? Yep, a lot of love coming okay. in. Just checking in. <laughs> Always like to check in with you guys. Um, really quick to show you guys the semi Delino care I'm going to recommend to Evelyn. So moisture, moisture, moisture for curl. Um, we'll do the elasticity test on her when I rinse her out just to be sure that she doesn't need any repair, but I'm pretty confident with my formulation. She'll be good. So this is again, our nutritive system, but it's a moisture base. Um, for the clients at home, I have them just use this mask for five minutes in the shower and this is the shampoo. Um, but you can use this as a treatment in the salon as well. And, um, again, we have like these super cool vials that give you the opportunity to customize that treatment. For curl, I also love using this leave-in conditioner just to help with styling. Um, so this will again encourage moisture in her hair, but it'll also create that flexibility and that foundation that sometimes like creams do for clients. And then the last thing I'm going to recommend to Evelyn, are you okay if I talk about your scalp? Yes. Okay. So Evelyn does have like a little bit of flakiness. And I wasn't excited to hear this. That's never an exciting thing, but it's great to know that we have a product in Off Park Milano's arsenal that will provide a solution to that. This is a brand new launch for us. It's our scalp line. Um, and for scalp, we do have a rebalancing system that provides you relief from dandruff. Um, the technology in it's really cool. If you guys wanna know more about it, definitely go visit Off Park's Instagram page and um, our different website outlets. But these three products will give her immediate relief for dandruff. The one I really want to show you guys, though, is this um, exfoliating scrub. So I'm going to put a little bit up in my hand. You actually apply this onto the scalp dry. And you rub it and emulsify it. When you apply it, it gets almost foamy. 
and when it's foaming, that's when you know it's been emulsified. You can add a little bit of water, but initially you want it to be super dry. And you just rub it into their scalp as they're shampooing, rinse the water over it, and then go through and shampoo. And it almost immediately clears up their dandruff. Like I've used this on four different people and have been like shook every time. So. And how often would they use that product if that's something they're experiencing? I do recommend customizing that for each client. So if they're experiencing pretty severe symptoms, um, maybe like two or three times a week, also depending on how often they wash. Um, and maybe the scrub specifically, they use once a week and they use the shampoo on a daily basis. That's also totally fine. It's a color safe system. So that's super unique, having a dandruff focused system that's also good for your color. That just answered Kelsey's question. Oh, good. <laughs> Built in info. Um, yeah, so it's 100% color safe. All of our semi delino systems are. They all have color fix complex, which is great. Um, but yeah, I would definitely customize the regimen for that client, but the scrub may be like a once a week thing. And also remember, um, we do teach full services you can use with our scalp line as well. So that gives, again, us as an opportunity to professionalize the system a little bit in the salon too. And last question before we sign off, going yep. back to the toner, will you be applying that on wet or dry hair? So I am going to apply it onto really, really, really towel dried hair. Um, for most absorption, you want to apply, apply on 100% dry. If you're covering gray, you want to apply 100% dry. So I'm really going to focus on towel drying her hair super, super well to make sure that all of that moisture is removed. Um, because she's curly, I do want to maintain some moisture for styling. Um, so that's the only reason why there's an exception. But that's a good question. <laughs> cool. Um, thank you guys so much. We're going to rinse her, get her finished up, and then we'll post the after pictures. But I so appreciate you joining. Thank you, Hairbrain, for having me, and I will see you guys later.